What's up, everybody? Lazarus Fox here, bringing you a Stellaris console edition tutorial. Uh, I look up tutorials online, and I see most of them are 30, 40 minutes long, which is understandable because this is a very complex game. But I'm going to go through and make you some quick tutorials on little things throughout the game to help you understand how to start the game, um, understand what you're doing, and how to how to progress. <coughs> So first we're going to go over how to create a game. You usually have to select an empire, you can randomize an empire, or you can create a new empire. Selecting an empire lets you look through empires you've already created, and empires that the game itself has created. Um, if you go from this screen and you push triangle to manage on any one given empire, you'll be able to see their traits, government, ethics and civics, ship appearance, advisor voice, and biography if one is available. Um, if you want to go even further, you can edit an already pre-made empire or one of your previously made empires and it lets you customize an empire completely the way that you would build an empire. Now before we do that, I'm going to show you how to create an empire because it'll go over those same topics. So here, you can pick your appearance. Uh, note if you have the DLCs and you use the machines, you will be creating a different empire, you'll be creating a machine empire compared to an organic empire. So <clears throat> this is just pretty much for appearance, nothing important, doesn't really affect your species in general. So let's see, we'll just pick a uh, random humanoid species name. Uh, we're just gonna make something up. <clears throat> Alright, so we have our blargs. Um, this is where you can customize the names of everything that's going to be in your empire. I prefer to usually change it to the empire. What it looks like, most of this stuff purely cosmetic still. Um, some of them are different and hard to understand. Some of them are random names. I usually prefer some of the humanoid ones, like the human UNE ones. Uh, some of the machine ones are actually kind of cool too if you're going that route. I'll make another video on machines because that's that's a whole different breed. <coughs> um, so we'll go ahead and pick one of those. Now this is where it gets important. Uh, your traits are going to affect your empire creation. So these are different things from food for jobs, um, energy credits, research, minerals. Uh, it's going to affect different things for your characters. So go ahead, go through and read all those. They're pretty self-explanatory. If you're not really sure what you're looking at, then go pick a already built empire and try the game before you start trying to figure out how to build an empire. Most of it's pretty self-explanatory and if you've played a Civilization or Age of Wonders, I believe, was very similar to this game, uh, you'll understand most of what this is going to do, what you're going to pick. Uh, so you get five trait picks. You can also pick negatives to give you some more points. Um, so I always try to go with stuff for energy, stuff for research, or stuff for your fleet, which actually isn't in traits, that's in something else. You can choose very strong, which is your army. Armies are just planet fall armies, not your actual fleet itself. So we're just going to go ahead and choose intelligent. Um, let's see, we have four trait picks left, three points. Let's try something I haven't tried one. Oh, you can only pick one of those at a time. Okay. So, let's see. Extremely adaptive. Negative four. You know what? Let's not do that. Let's do zero points. So, I like to take some negatives because some of these negatives aren't so bad depending on what you take. You definitely don't want housing usage or something like civilian industries usage or consumer goods usage because those are kind of amenities that's another pain in the ass one uh, let's see governing ethics attraction I haven't messed too much with governing ethics so we're going to pick this one first uh, no consumer goods like I said that's terrible fleeting's not so bad we have one point left for positive so let's just pick something simple so we can continue this quick tutorial <coughs> There's any ones left? Oh yeah, resilient. Uh, cool. And then your ruler. This is where you pick your ruler's name. 
set mostly more cosmetic stuff nothing too crazy important um, we're not gonna worry too much about what's going on here um, this will change to rulers sometimes you have an heir uh, if you choose empires versus like democracies that's something else we'll get into here in a moment um, home world this is where you name your home world Star name. Most of this stuff still strictly cosmetic here in the beginning. I like to choose trinary systems. You can choose between binary, urinary, or you can choose soul itself, the Deneb system, random. I like trinaries because there's times when you start out in the game it'll actually give you even more energy, which at the beginning of the game is extremely useful. Uh, city appearance, like I, once again, mostly cosmetic. Nothing crazy here. Um, Empire. This is where it starts to get a little bit more confusing if you haven't played a civilization or empire type game um, go through all of these read each one you're going to be allowed to select either up to three blue ones or one blue one oops one blue one and an orange one oops so you can pick a combina any of those combinations. Um, I always prefer Fanatic to Militarist because it gives you ship fire rate plus 20% right off the bat. Um, and then one of the other ones I like to use with it is... I've actually messed with a couple of these. <coughs> um, authoritarian's fun. You get more influence. You can enslave other species. Um, purge and displace aliens that can become useful if you start taking over other societies and you don't like those specific species and what their negatives are if they're using too many consumer goods being just an issue in general and then the starblaze influence cost is huge especially at the beginning of the game for expanding um, robot upkeep you can start to create individual robots even though you're not a specific robot species they you build you can build machine workshops and stuff and they'll actually produce robots and you get bonus research speed uh, monthly unity, edict cost, uh, xenophile can't you get you can't enslave people and you get trade value and the diplomatic influence costs, which those are useful. Um, just about anything in any of these that you choose is going to be useful, but it's also going to affect how your authority works. Um, so if I pick authoritarian, we'll go down here. You can see you can have a di dictatorship, empire, military junta. Um, <clears throat> and go through, read each one of those. Each one of those is just going to affect the gameplay a little, uh, gameplay a little bit. Star empires, like I said, you can go back to your species, go to your ruler, and you can actually choose an heir, and that'll make it so you don't have to worry about voting or democracies or stuff like that. But if you do pick one of the other ones, you'll see it'll change down here. Millie Commissant, military junta. Um, it's not the one I'm looking for. Moral democracy. So there you go. You have like a normal democracy. Elections are held every 10 years. And uh, the presidents are actually held accountable for completing some sort of task. Um, such as building research stations or building mining stations or stuff, stuff like that. Um, bureaucracy, direct dictatorship, like I said, go through, just read all these. I'm not going to sit there and explain each one. Um, if none of, if they don't make sense, look it up. There's some really good online resources for this game I've seen. <clears throat> so like I said, I like uh, Fanatic Militarist. And I believe it was Egalitarian I had used for one of them. Democratic Government. No, I actually preferred the Oligarch. The Oligarch's just nicer because your president's not held to something in the late game that starts to get annoying because you've built a bunch of stuff already and there's no need for it. Um, I prefer the Oligarch governments because it takes 20 years to hold a new election, so you have more time to save up influence. I'm not sure if the timing affects the cost of influence, but uh, either the Oligarchy or some of the Empires I've actually just started messing with. Those are fun. Um, you can you get here's where you name your empire. This is what'll show up on your empire selection screen. The adjective for it. You can customize the flag, the colors, all the good stuff. We're not gonna really mess with that too much now. And then you can pick your ship appearance. Uh, that's all cosmetic. Advisor voice, same thing. Go through. Just listen to the ones. See which one you like. If you don't like one, don't ever choose it. Just always pick the ones you like. Attention uh, on some deck. of them are better than others. 
some of them are extremely annoying though so I would avoid some that you don't like uh, then your summary will show everything you've picked, what you've built, and what you've done. Um, for the sake of starting a new empire, I would recommend picking one of the pre-created empires. And if you're very, very new to the game, one of my favorite empires to start out with in this game was the Kel'Azan Republic. I actually took them and made a completely custom species that are called Arcanians because um, you can, like I said earlier, you can go into manage with triangle and you can read everything that this government does and what their traits are, the ship appearance, advisor voice, the biography is actually there because it's a computer created empire and then you can go through and edit it, you can change the appearance of whatever species you want it to be, the species name, you can customize everything that we just went over, you can even change their traits if you want to, that's why when you're first starting out I recommend either Build, picking an already built empire or going through an already built empire and maybe just tweaking a few things to your liking instead of actually building an empire from scratch, especially if you don't know a lot about the game mechanics and how it's working right away. <clears throat> so that is how to start your empire. So we're going to select an empire. I'm going to actually go up and we'll pick my Arcanians. Um, Earth, Earth is good too. I changed mine to be the United Federation of Planets. They're they're okay. They're kind of weak. A few times I've used them, they haven't really been up to par with what I've needed for either going to war with someone next to me or just dealing with the galaxy at large. They're great for democracy. Great for getting other species to like you if you want to win on the peaceful route. That is also an option. The uh, hive mind is a different thing too because it deals with collective consciousness. We can take a look at that real quick. Um, those change in your traits here. Uh, the center option, the just all consciousness, you can read that, see exactly what it does. It changes the governing ethics a little bit and the civic picks you get to go through. The civic picks change with each empire that you have. Um, the hive mind ones you can go through and read. Those just give you different bonuses. You usually get to pick two civic picks at the beginning of the game. Um, if you look at a normal empire, you can see that there's way more, and a lot of them are green, and there'll be ones that are grayed out, as you can see. Those are just the ones you can't pick, and those are affected by your uh, governing tabs that you chose. Sorry about that. The governing ethics that you chose will affect which civics that you're allowed to pick. <clears throat> So now we will pick one, and I will show you how to start a game. Uh, let's choose my Arcanians. As you can see, I customized them. This is the same exact ones as those Kelazan. I just went through and made my own custom race with the same stats because I really enjoyed playing with this one. I enjoyed their strength. I enjoyed what they were able to do. Um, I have a full galaxy that's taken over by them. I've won the game. The nice thing about this game is it lets you continue to play the game in sandbox mode even after you've won the game. So you can continue your empire, expand, taking over the whole galaxy if you'd like. Um, so this is where you actually build a game. I recommend, especially if you're brand new to the game, start out small. Large ones are fun and they seem enticing, especially at the beginning because there's so much to the game, but I promise you, you're going to mess something up, something's going to go wrong on your first game, or you're not going to like how you built a certain thing or started out. So starting out with a small system gives you the option to play through a complete game, even if you don't like the way a lot of it turned out, and either win or lose and go through it, and now you have a better idea and you can start building bigger empires because you're more comfortable with how the game works. Uh, galaxy shape can change um, with size. You can get start to get spirals. The large one, you can eventually get forearm spirals. Uh, for starting out, I recommend an elliptical galaxy. Those are much easier to travel through. AI empires, you can choose as many as you like. Uh, setting the galaxy size affects most of the things in this screen. So just bear in mind, if you do have larger galaxies, you can have more AI empires, advanced AI starts. That just means there's going to be one of these AI empires that you selected that's going to be starting off highly advanced. Um, you don't really want to mess with them right away. Same thing with fallen empires. Fallen empires are almost like endgame empires. Uh, you really don't want to fuck with them until the endgame unless you can somehow get them to like you and start to give you things. But that's not always as likely. Usually you have to build up a fleet strong enough to take them on by the end of the game. or just advance past them if you have victory turned on, which we'll go over soon. So advanced AI starts, um, when you're first starting off in this game, I'd recommend maybe like 
two or three uh, empires, four at the most. You really don't want to clutter yourself with too much in such a small galaxy. You want to be able to expand and be able to take control of certain things that you need. So I always leave that a little bit lower for the smaller games. Advanced AI starts, I would leave this off for your first game, as well as Fallen Empires. I mean, you can turn on one Fallen Empire with a small galaxy, but it, just keep in mind it's going to make the game take that much longer for you to be able to win the game, whereas if you just leave the Fallen Empires off, you'll only have the AI Empires to compete with. Marauder Empires is something new. They're empires that are aiding you in being able to raid other people or do certain things. Once again, for starting in the game, I would turn most of these things off until you get a feel for the game so you can understand it. Marauder Empires are definitely fun though. Uh, tech Tradition cost, the same thing. Um, <clears throat> I would put this a little bit lower starting off just so you can get used to it. Starts at 0.75, that's probably good. Uh, one is where most games that I usually play are, and it does take a little bit longer, but the games seem to last a little bit longer. I enjoy playing the longer haul in most of these games. Um, so we're going to leave that at 0.75. Habitable Worlds, I'm going to turn up just a little bit. I like having more Habitable Worlds for more expansion, being able to create more things, being able to increase your tech and stuff. We'll go over that with research and stuff in my next video when we talk about starting out and your tabs. Uh, primitive civilizations, there's still going to be civilizations within the game that you can build posts around, observation posts, and you will be able to either observe them with no interference or be able to interfere with them and you can cause certain issues to happen or you can make them so you up, you not, not uplift, uplift is something different. You can um, <clears throat> basically give them technology and start to bring them to the space age if your empire allows you to mess with primitive civilizations and then they gain control of that system and they can be an ally or your vassal or you can eventually just absorb them and use their species as bonuses for other planets that you inhabit da 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 we'll go over all that in more in more detail in later videos crisis strength this is an in-game crisis there's going to be in-game factions that show up at the at a certain year um, I haven't messed too much with the Crisis Factions because one of my friends has actually played this a few times too and did mess with them and they totally ruined his, his very, very first game. So for your first game, I would even turn their just strength down if you want to leave them on. And that's what all of this is controlled. You can turn your victory year, uh, let's see, mid-game year. We're going to put that out a little more because I believe that's when the... Yeah, exactly. That's when your endgame crisis can start to occur. Uh, 2400 is quite a long time in this game, though. Keep that in mind. Endgame year, that's just... If nobody's won by a certain year, uh, then it'll give the victory to whoever has the most points as a given empire. And we'll go over that eventually, too. Uh, your victory year, this is, like I was saying, you can turn this off, and that will... At, uh, for one of my games, it stopped the in-game crisis, so none of this stuff really affected too much. Uh, we're going to go ahead and leave Victory Year 3200. That's going to be so far away, it's not even going to matter. This is your difficulty for starting out. I highly recommend Cadet, just so you can get a feel for the game. Ensign's not so bad either, but once you start getting higher than that, it starts to get a little bit tougher, especially facing the enemies. I've actually just left it on Captain for right now, because that seems to be a very well balance for me. But just starting out, I would honestly recommend putting it on cadet and turning your victory year off so you can sandbox mode it uh yeah aggressiveness i would leave low for your very first game the higher you put it the more likely they are to just invade your space just because they don't like the way you looked at them versus they just kind of leave you alone while you can build up learn the game and then start to take over their empires uh, empire placement can be important random's fun Clusters are good too. Uh, in larger galaxies, you can actually change a few more options in this. Um, let's take a look. So, large empires, you can actually have them in. Oh no, it is only two now. I thought there was another option in here. Either way, random puts them just wherever the fuck, and clusters puts them together in small clusters. So, like, you and one person will be next to each other while another person another person are next to each other way off on the other side of the galaxy <clears throat> so let's turn this back down 
Iron Man mode. Uh, let's go over hyperlane density first. I always turn hyperlane density up for my first few games. Um, it's kind of give or take with this. Hyperlane density lower can be good because there's more bottlenecks for people trying to fly into your empire, but it's harder for you to get further places in the galaxy before you unlock gateways and wormholes. Um, if you have them turned up more, then it's easier to access anywhere in the galaxy itself, but also easier for your enemies to access you. So just bear in mind, play with this, keep it where you want. I've tried games where it's been to 0.5, and I've had games where we turned it all the way up to full. It's just a matter of preference in this. I would say starting out, turn them up just so you can get around the galaxy faster and you're getting a better feel for the game. This is where I changed my strategy a little bit now. I used to turn wormholes all the way up. Wormholes can actually screw you in this game. So I prefer to keep wormhole pairs down to 1, 5, or even 0.25. I do like having them on because early in the game, if you get lucky and get a wormhole, it can help out. But once you start getting a wormhole in every other system and enemies start to unlock wormhole travel, they can actually screw you and fly into those wormholes when you're not paying attention. And when there's so many to keep track of, it's just a nuisance more than a help to where gateways, if you close your borders, you can actually make it so they can't come into your system through those gateways uh, and not allow them to use those gateways. Gateways you get after or wormholes but gateways are better because you can travel from that gateway to any other active gateway that you own in the galaxy or that's open to your system to whereas wormholes it's only one end to another end there's no to and fro wherever you want gateways are much better eventually in the game you're able to build gateways so this doesn't really matter anyway i just like turning them on because gateways make a huge difference in travel in this game and it doesn't take forever I turned guaranteed habitable worlds up because the lower you turn it up, you're not guaranteed to spawn close to starting uh, habitable worlds, which can really kind of hinder you at the beginning of the game, especially if you're new to the game and you're not understanding exactly how it works. Iron Man mode, this is your choice. You can turn it on or off, but it, I would recommend leaving it on. This just changes the way that the gameplay saves. Iron Man mode's on, so it's constantly saving, and you really can't revert to any previous saves, but turning it off lets you revert to any save you want. However, you don't get trophies for this. So if you don't care about trophies, it doesn't matter to you, go ahead and turn it off so you can revert to saves in case you do mess something up. I like to leave it on because Iron Man mode gives you the trophies, and you get... You, get, you can unlock a lot of trophies toward the end game, especially I, my first game I unlocked most of the trophies I have now just in one game. So that's how you start a game. Uh, my next video will be on your tabs and starting out. We will continue next time. Thank you.